Have you ever wondered what it would be like if the NFL draft was redrafted? There could be a do-over and Miles Garrett wasn't the number one overall pick in this past 2017 NFL draft. This is not an episode of Blue's Clues, but I'm hoping you guys all said yes at your monitors or TV screens or laptops or phones or whatever you're watching this on. Um, because that's exactly what we're doing here today. What's going on, guys? Uh, Moundly Clunt, Fred Word here, coming back at you with another video. And today we're doing the... 2017 NFL redraft slash draft do-over should be a lot of fun uh, I will preface this with a couple of things because no one ever really seems to understand how these work we're going based off the knowledge of the information we already have so let's just say for example that the Browns were to take Miles Garrett at number one he's like still in play here let I'll do a different example so the Giants took Evan Ingram at number uh, 22, I believe it was. So if the Giants get back up to pick number 22, Evan Ingram is still available to be selected. Um, they don't already have him on their team. It's just starting from scratch, just like the draft was happening today, with the information we know now, all the players are still in play. If you didn't follow that, uh, I'm sorry. You're slower than a 104-year-old tortoise. They do actually live pretty old. Uh, this has been an odd intro, but let's just get straight into it. And you guys can feel free to disagree. I mean, this is just up to my own, uh, you know, jurisdiction. I did all this. It's what I think would happen if there were to be a redraft. I guess if I were uh, the GM of all of these teams, based on a lot of different things. Doing it in the car one day when I was uh, uh, sitting in the back seat, as as I do. I am a child. Um, that's not true. I don't. I don't know why I'm trying to be funny with not funny jokes. Anyway. Um, yeah, you guys can feel free to disagree. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, but with the first overall pick in the draft, the Cleveland Browns took Miles Garrett. And with the first pick in this NFL redraft, the Cleveland Browns will select Miles Garrett, defensive end out of Texas A&M. Um, he's just, I think, the best player in this draft class thus far. Um, now, there is a little bit up in the air and also... Uh, for the sake of continuity, we are keeping the draft order the exact same as if all the trade-ups and trade-downs happened exactly the way they did. We're not reverting it to prior to the draft order, just for the sake of continuity. Um, but yeah, Miles Garrett, he had a very, very good season when he was healthy. Um, he was injured for a decent portion, but was very, very good when he played. Freak of nature athlete and a very talented defensive end for the Browns. And I think they would do this same exact pick over given the opportunity. With the second pick in the draft, the Chicago Bears would trade up to draft Mitchell Trubisky, Trubisky quarterback out of UNC. Uh, and he was, you know, not great for a first-year quarterback. I mean, and it, there are growing pains, and he could end up being one of the best quarterbacks in this league. But for the sake of the video, we're going to actually change this pick and have the Chicago Bears select at number two. No, I'm just kidding. I got you. Mitchell Trubisky again. Basically, the deal with this pick is the Bears are so needy for a quarterback to build their franchise around. This had to be the same exact pick. And even though, you know, you do see good performance from Deshaun Watson in terms of fantasy numbers and things like that, I think Mitchell Trubisky still is the pick here. I think the Bears would keep it the exact same. And I'll explain more as the video goes on. But uh, yeah, Mitchell Trubisky still is the pick here at number two. I think teams would be more likely to take the same prospect they liked uh, prior to the draft. So that's the reason you're not seeing a different quarterback's name right here. At number three, the 49ers would select Solomon Thomas, a defensive end out of Stanford. Uh, and he's another guy that was injured a decent portion of this season. So it was difficult to exactly get a good read on, you know, how good he is as a player. And with this pick, we're going to go ahead and change it. And actually, we're going to change it this time. And have the 49ers select Marshawn Lattimore, a cornerback out of Ohio State, was arguably the best cornerback in the NFL over this past year. He did miss a few games, but he was dominant when he was playing. Absolutely phenomenal rookie season. One of the best I can remember of any cornerback coming into the league. Um, maybe ever. Like, it's that wild how dominant and amazing he was. Up through like week 12 of the season, you would have a lower passer rating throwing into the dirt than targeting Marshawn Lattimore which is absolutely ridiculous. So if in a game against the New Orleans Saints, you'd be better off throwing it into the ground than throwing it his way. That's amazing with the uh, interceptions and pass breakups and things like that. Just crazy season. 
absolutely worthy of a top three selection, and the 49ers are fortunate enough to have him there available at three. At number four, the Jacksonville Jaguars would select Leonard Fournette, a running back out of LSU. And with this pick in the 2017 NFL Draft do over the Jacksonville Jaguars select Deshaun Watson, quarterback out of Clemson. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few things here. Everyone's always wondering why I hate Deshaun Watson. I don't hate Deshaun Watson. I don't really hate any NFL player, except for maybe Isaiah Crowell. But other than that, I don't hate anyone. I just recognize that the facts are the facts, whether you like to believe them or not. So even though Deshaun Watson put up decent fantasy numbers, and he was great in that department, he had one of the worst turnover-worthy throw percentage in the NFL, which is not good at all. That's very, very bad. He threw a lot of short passes where the player uh, made a lot of effort after the catch to get more yardage, which helped inflate his numbers. I think he's a great dual threat mobile quarterback, and I think he makes a lot of plays happen with his legs. I would describe him as a playmaker. However, I don't really think he's a franchise arm. However, you know, given the Jaguars' ineptitude, as they just re-sign Blake Bortles in real life, uh, they clearly really don't know what they're doing. And not to say that I do. Clearly, I don't run a franchise. And, you know, many of you hate me for this Deshaun Watson opinion. That's fine. It's not an opinion. It's backed up by fact. So if you're looking at yardage and touchdowns or whatever, I really could care less. All I care about, you know, turnover-worthy throw percentage. I think QBR uh, is a decent stat passer rating, kind of in the same boat. But it's really how good are you um, with yards per attempt? How good are you at actually making the tough throws, making the right reads. Deshaun Watson just isn't there yet. Doesn't have the arm strength comparatively to top quarterbacks in the NFL. I just don't think he's ever going to get there. People, again, they hate this. You think I don't know what I'm talking about? That's all right. You're entitled to your opinion, uh, even though it may not be the correct one. And, you know, you can't have opinions that are correct. It's just an opinion, whatever you want to say. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a pick here for the Jaguars, even though when I had, uh, for the same reason, Two years ago, when I had, or I guess technically last year, where I had Dak Prescott as the number one overall pick, even though I thought Dak Prescott was trash, and now everyone notices Dak Prescott is absolute garbage. You're like, oh, I guess Bengal was right about that one, uh, and he shouldn't have been the number one overall pick. Everyone was crucifying me last year. It's all right. We'll see how Deshaun Watson's career play at, uh, plays out. I'm rooting for him, even if I don't think he's going to be that good. I'm rooting for him. We've lingered on this pick for far too long. Um, you guys know my opinion. You know, I like Deshaun Watson. Great guy. Fun player to watch. I just don't think he's a franchise caliber arm. Moving on. Get the Titans. Picking next. At number five, the Tennessee Titans would select Corey Davis, a receiver out of Western Michigan. Unfortunately, he's another guy that was injured much of the season. Uh, and that's, you know, not a great look when evaluating his talent because it's hard to say, you know, how good he was as a rookie when he barely played. We'll see, though. With this pick in the redraft, I'm going to have the Tennessee Titans selecting Jamal Adams, safety out of LSU. The reason I have Jamal Adams over Malik Hooker, who I think performed better, and he was another guy was at, that was injured a decent bit. Um, the reason I have Jamal Adams over Malik Hooker is I think with Kevin Byard having the great season he did at free safety, they'd need a truer, strong safety at the position on their team. I think Jonathan Cyprian However, he was a good in-the-box safety for the Jaguars just two years ago. He was absolutely horrific for the Tennessee Titans last year. They need safety help very, very badly, and I think Jamal Adams would fit in perfectly. A good, very versatile safety that can play in the box and over the top. Um, good coverage ability, great run stopper. I'm a fan of this pick for the Titans if they were to uh, get a chance to redraft that pick and go a different direction than Corey Davis. At number six, the New York Jets would select Jamal Adams, who would, you know, just go another pick to ahead of this one to the Tennessee Titans. So obviously he is no longer on the board, which leaves the Jets with, I think, one clear option. And for me, that option is going to be Alvin Kamara, halfback out of Tennessee. It's no secret that the Jets really haven't had that one sick playmaking running back um, for a while now. I mean, Matt Forte has been here. You have Bilal Powell, who's actually been decent. And, you know, but I haven't been able to think of a good running back really since Thomas Jones. You could talk about Chris Ivory. You could talk about Sean Green. But they haven't really had that if factor that rookie of the year Alvin Kamara has. I think he's a very, very talented player. And he was awesome 
in that dual running back system in New Orleans this past year. I think a very versatile player that can catch the ball out of the backfield, that can run the ball very elusive, fast. He really has you know, everything you look for in terms of uh, what a running back should be. Alvin Kamara is such a sick player. And the Jets, you, you could argue get a steal here at number six. At number seven, the LA Chargers would take Mike Williams, a receiver out of Clemson. And I feel like this is a recurring trend. He was injured most of the season, if not all. I think he was actually injured all of the season. So really unfortunate with that situation. Uh, and instead of Mike Williams, we're going to go ahead and have the LA Chargers select Malik Hooker. Safety out of Ohio State was so, so good for the Colts prior to going down uh, to injury. Easily, in my mind, should have been a top 10 pick. Just really should have been. And somehow fell all the way down the board to the Colts about the middle of the first round. I thought that was ridiculous. He should have been a top 10 pick. It's just his talent is just through the roof. Over the top, playmaking safety with phenomenal ball skills and uh, recognition. Really, really big fan of Malik Cooker. Chargers get themselves just another sick piece to add to their secondary already with Casey Hayward, a healthy Jason Verrett. Um, you have Trevor Williams, who's really, really good as well. And of course, Desmond King had a very good season. So if you get out four solid CBs, play maybe a dime package, or you could even talk about moving Desmond King to, to strong safety and have Malik Hooker at free safety. I mean, you just have such a big group of playmakers in your secondary. It'd be absolutely ridiculous. I thought about having an interior uh, pass rusher, interior defensive lineman on this team, maybe a nose rather than just a pure pass rusher. I ended up going with Malik, uh, with Malik Hooker. I just think he's the best pure player available at a position of need for the Chargers. I think he's just a really good upgrade with way more potential uh, over Trey Boston. And I just didn't really value the interior defensive lineman the way I do uh, with Malik Hooker here at this spot. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the Carolina Panthers at number eight, is it? So at number eight, the Panthers would select Christian McCaffrey running back out of Stanford. I believe he won the Heisman. We can actually check this here. Um, might have been the runner up. I feel like I thought he did win the Heisman. He might have just missed out. Uh, I don't see it there on his Wikipedia page. But very, very good college player. And this past season with the Panthers, he was more of a receiver out of the backfield. He had like 80 catchers or so. I wonder if I can just check that real quick. He had 80 catches on the nose. So... That's a little bit too much for a running back. And you know, well, how do you say too much? How is that too many catches? You know, I just feel like he wasn't really their main running back. They had no run game. He was a receiver that happened to be in the backfield. Lined up in the slot, I believe, quite a bit. Uh, and I think really they need more of a, a true bell cow running back if they're going to take one here in the top 10. So instead of Christian McCaffrey, I've decided to go ahead and pencil in Kareem Hunt. The Toledo Torpedo, running back, of course, out of Toledo. Played all season with the Chiefs. He was very, very good at the start of the year and then slowed down a bit uh, near the end. I think he still led the league in rushing, though, if I'm not mistaken. That's another thing I could possibly check, but we're not going to. Um, he was just very solid all around. Again, he did taper off near the end, but he could be more of the true uh, bell cow running back that the Carolina Panthers are looking for. I dabbled with going Leonard Fournette at this spot, but I think, you know, Kareem Hunt, I think he did lead the league in rushing. So when I made this, which was about probably two weeks ago, uh, actually January 28th, it was like a month ago. Um, figured this was probably the correct call. Maybe even though I think Leonard Fournette has a higher ceiling. We'll see. Kind of hard to complain with, uh, you know, getting the league leading a rusher on your team as a rookie. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> At number nine, the Cincinnati Bengals would select John Ross, a receiver out of Washington. John Ross was less than exceptional this past year as he struggled with injury and a number of other things as well. Uh, if we look at John Ross here, he had one rushing attempt for 12 yards. He plays receiver. I don't think he had a catch. Not a great season for the, uh, the rookie receiver out of Washington. Uh, so needless to say, I am going to change this pick and I'm going to change it to Leonard Fournette running back out of LSU. I think he was solid this, uh, this season for the Jaguars. I think he would have been way more effective if the Jaguars had a more defined passing game. I think they're, uh, limited by Robbie Blake Bortles a little bit as I don't think he's a viable starting quarterback in this league. Leonard Fournette, true bell cow running back. You keep hearing me use that term. He's someone that's got size, speed, strength. 
Not so much in the elusiveness department, um, but he will run right over you. And I think that's a trait that uh, not many running backs have today. You look at Leonard Fournette, you look at LeGarrette Blunt. That's a few of those guys that lead in that category. But when he gets a full head of steam going, it's going to be difficult to tackle him, especially with his breakaway speed. Reminds you of a younger Adrian Peterson. Tremendous player. Uh, obviously, they don't have Joe Mixon, and they don't like Gio Bernard or Jeremy Hill to be that, that main running back. So instead of Joe Mixon, pretty much they're going Leonard Fournette with this pick. At number 10, you'd see the Kansas City Chiefs select Pat Mahomes, quarterback out of Texas Tech. And with this pick in the 2017 NFL Draft do-over, the Kansas City Chiefs will select. Philly, it might have been pretty obvious. It's still Pat Mahomes, the second quarterback out of Texas Tech. Such a bright future. He was my favorite quarterback in this past class. And I think uh, he was decent in the one game he played near the end of the season. And now with, of course, Alex Smith being traded away from the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a great trade for the Chiefs. They got Kendall Fuller, one of the best slot cornerbacks in the NFL. Um, I think he was the number one graded slot corner in the NFL over this past year. Had a tremendous season, and he's super young as well. Chiefs crushed in that trade if Kendall Fuller continues to play as well as he did in Washington. But Patty Mahomes, just such, such a bright future. I think he's amazing, tremendous arm talent. Really hope he can continue to play well and uh you know improve and dominate the nfl i'm not a chiefs fan i am a pretty big pat mahomes fan he was a lot of fun to watch um really fun player really good player i think he's going to be very good at the next level when he uh he has to start and uh be that chiefs number one quarterback for i guess the rest of his time with the chiefs more than likely so it's a no-brainer for me pat mahomes still the pick here at number 11, the New Orleans Saints would go Marshawn Lattimore, cornerback out of Ohio State. And it's hard to say it, but it's not even hard to say. What am I talking about? It's easy to say it, but it's hard to believe that the Saints had such an amazing draft class. When you look at Marshawn Lattimore, one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, Alvin Kamara, debatably one of the best running backs in the NFL. Last season certainly makes a great argument for that. Ryan Ramchek had one of the best seasons of any tackle in the NFL. Marcus Williams, who obviously fucked up real hard in, in the playoffs. I don't know if you guys remember that one. But he had a phenomenal season. He was so good. He even had an interception in that game uh, prior to his face plant, randomly, uh, near the end of the game. That was not great if you're uh, a New Orleans Saints fan. As I think someone just followed me on Twitch. Hey, thanks for that. Link in the description. Great time to plug. Um... But yeah, they just had such an amazing draft class, and they won't be able to get any of those players back, more than likely, as with this pick, I'm going to go ahead and have the New Orleans Saints select Christian McCaffrey running back out of Stanford. I think he's exactly what the Saints team would look for. This is basically an Alvin Kamara replacement. Now, he didn't have as good of a season as Alvin Kamara overall, but they have similar capabilities in terms of receiving out of the backfield. And when you have Mark Ingram already, why would you not take Christian McCaffrey and get exactly the same production, debatably, when the Saints had the same thing going with Kamara in real life? So that was my thinking with this pick. I thought maybe Ramchek, you know, maybe even Marcus Williams for the sake of keeping him on the Saints. But I think Christian McCaffrey um, was the best decision here. Feel free to tell me what you think down in the comments section below. I'm sure not, not everyone's going to agree with, uh, agree with the full uh redraft that i have here and that's part of the fun get down there in the comments section subscribe if you're new uh follow subscribe to my second channel link in description follow my twitch link in description how annoying is this at number 12 the houston texans would select deshaun watson quarterback out of clemson obviously no longer available we had him going to the jacksonville jaguars at jaguars what the f jaguars at number four no longer on the board. They're going to have to go a different direction. That different direction is... Hey, we were just talking about him. Ryan Ramchek, offensive lineman out of Wisconsin, played right tackle uh, for the Texans, and they could use the offensive line help. Obviously, they no longer have Dwayne Brown on the left side. Ramchek could even play on the left. They're running with Chris Clark. Kendall Lamb's also on the roster. And then at right tackle, Derek Newton, who is a decent run blocker he can't pass block worth a shit can't protect any quarterback and even if your quarterback is tom savage or tj yates or whoever they're running on this roster josh johnson they signed i didn't even realize that um ryan ramchek i think clearly the call here he had such a good season for the saints and uh, yeah the saints they know how to draft they had a, <laughs> it's such a good draft 
Um, but yeah, let's move on from uh, from Ramcheck here in the Texans to the Arizona Cardinals at pick number 14, I believe, or 13, you know, I don't know numbers, whatever. Yep, it is 13, where the Cardinals would select Hassan Reddick, and with his pick in the redraft, instead of the Temple linebacker slash edge slash whatever, he could, he's played safety even at, at Temple for his freshman season, played defensive end, I mean, what is this guy? Uh, will we take the Swiss Army knife or will we go a different direction? I think I've already hinted at it. We're going Reuben Foster, inside linebacker out of Alabama. Here's the issue. When I did this a month ago, Reuben Foster hadn't been arrested twice, all right? <laughs> or maybe he had been the first time for, like, marijuana possession in the state of Alabama. Um, he also, like, beat his girlfriend or something, threw down the state. I don't know what he did exactly. Uh, not great stuff. However, I'm going to still stick with it. He had such a good season for the Niners. He's such a good player. He was so good. Also, you don't love uh, to hear about NFL players beating their significant others or whatever they are. Maybe she was a prostitute. It's certainly a possibility. I don't know why I'm speculating into that. Very good player, though. We're going to go Ruben Foster here. At <laughs> pick number 13 and move on from the... Uh, korean hooker talk that's that's a time for another video oh allegedly by the way gotta gotta add that in uh at pick number 14 the philadelphia eagles would select Derek barnett a defensive end out of tennessee with this pick in the 2017 nfl redraft philadelphia eagles select Derek barnett i think he was instrumental um in the eagles playoff run i think he you know was making plays just at the right times I think he still does have a great deal of potential. Clearly an edge rusher out of Tennessee. Um, he was solid. I think he's going to continue to get better. Uh, he was one of my favorite edge rushers in the class, so I was a little bit disappointed when he went to uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, as I am a Giants fan. I think the Eagles would keep this pick the exact same, though. Continue to develop him. Continue to have him make plays for you. Clear-cut pick for me here at number 14. At number 15, however, the Indianapolis Colts would select Malik Hooker, a safety out of Ohio State. Here's the thing about Malik Hooker. Clearly no longer on the board as he went to the Los Angeles Chargers at number 7. So instead of Malik Hooker, the Indianapolis Colts will select Solomon Thomas, defensive lineman out of Stanford. Interesting situation with Solomon Thomas. He was a great prospect coming out of Stanford. San Stanford, not Samford. That'd be a, a way worse school. But Stanford, he was a really, really good prospect. And then he's another guy that dealt with injury over this past season, but was decent when he was actually playing. So it's a little bit of a toss-up as, okay, even though he didn't play much, when he was playing, he was doing so at a pretty good level for a rookie. Was great in run defense, if I recall correctly, more so than getting after the quarterback in terms of pass rush productivity. But I think the Colts need the help on the defensive line, and maybe if they went Solomon Thomas here, they can go a different direction than Bradley Chubb, but then maybe you go safety in this class because you need one. Malik Hooker had such a good season. I don't know. I think Solomon Thomas is a clear-cut pick here. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer at this point in the draft. At number 16, the Baltimore Ravens would select Marlon Humphrey, a cornerback out of Alabama. We all know, if we're Ravens guys, that uh, Ozzie Newsome loves him some Alabama players. So why not continue the trend and take one of Alabama's biggest rivals? We're not continuing any trends. It's Tredavious White out of LSU. Now I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. How did Tredavious White, arguably having one of the best seasons of any cornerback in the NFL, fall all the way down to number 16 or 17 or wherever we are? And I'll tell you how. Uh, I don't know. It's just how I did it. And uh, I feel like based on the teams and their needs picking ahead of them, they would all go different directions. You could argue that maybe the Colts would go for Tredavious White, or you could say maybe the Saints would since they took Marshawn Lattimore. But I think, you know, all the players I had going just make a little bit more sense for their scheme fit uh, and what they had going on. I think Tredavious White would be a really good fit here for the Ravens. They do need the cornerback help. And I think this is just a fall from grace for Tredavious White, unfortunately. He does go higher than he was selected. Maybe should have been a bit higher in this redraft, but it just happened to play out this way where Tredavious White is available at number 16 or 17. And I had to take him here for the Ravens. 
At number 17, so that's where we are, the Washington Redskins would select Jonathan Allen, a defensive end out of Alabama. And I would say that Jonathan Allen is probably more of a defensive tackle in the correct scheme, if not a 3-4 defensive end. But I'm pretty sure the Redskins currently play a 4-3. I think they move Kerrigan down to a pure defensive end, and they have Matt Ioannidis down there. They might actually still be in a 3-4. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I don't I don't remember. Um, uh, but either way, I think Jonathan Allen was a top four player for me in this draft, but he's a guy that I, he didn't really play much of this season at all. In fact, let me see um, if we can get how many tackles he had. He had 10 tackles in a sack. I don't really think he played many games for the Redskins. In fact, I know that he didn't, uh, even though I think he is a really, really good player. I love, 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 love Jonathan Allen. I think he's so good. Really pissed the Redskins got him, but again, he really didn't play much, and I think maybe there's a more pressing need on the board. Uh, at safety with Sua Cravens, maybe never playing again. As he, I, I did hear he applied for reinstatement, but DJ Swearinger is a mess. And over on the other side of free safety, it's like Monte Nicholson was pretty good, but maybe he needs some help on the other side because obviously D'Angelo Hall, he's not a viable starting safety option anymore in this league. They need some more safety help. And for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and pencil in Buddha Baker, safety out of Washington. And the reason I have Buddha Baker here is even if they don't decide to play Buda Baker, that's a lot of Buda Bakers, by the way, a lot of Bs, even if they don't decide to play him at safety, he's a guy that could easily play nickel corner. He did so at Washington, he did so for the Arizona Cardinals, and he did so at a really, really high level. He was awesome in the slot for the Cardinals this year. He's awesome as an in-the-box safety off the blitz. Really, really good player. Had a great season. I can't overstate that enough. Really really good player redskins get themselves a steal here at number 17 to replace kendall fuller essentially at this point if you're going to play him at nickel corner really solid player uh i, I really can't say that enough. very underrated you guys are probably going to continue to see more great things from this guy uh for the cardinals in that like odd system that they have rocking with money backers and safeties playing in the box and things like that they have a fun defense buddha baker is a big reason why moving on to number 18 and at number 18, we'd see the Tennessee Titans select Adoree Jackson, a cornerback out of uh, USC. And for me, Adoree Jackson was not great this season. I really don't think he was phenomenal. Um, but regardless, I digress. We'll move on. The Tennessee Titans select TJ Watt, outside linebacker out of Wisconsin. I'm going to call him more of an edge because like, even though he was decent in coverage this year when he did drop back, he's really a pass rusher. He's an edge rusher. He's never really going to be um, an interior guy for you under any circumstance unless it's on like a stunt or a, some type of uh, outside linebacker, you know, A or B gap blitz, whatever you want to do. The A gap would be kind of strange. It would probably B or C gap blitz for him. He was really solid. I think definitely top five for defense rookie of the year. In my mind, it would go Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Tredavious White, Ruben Foster, then maybe a TJ Watt at four. I think that would probably make the most sense. Um, but nevertheless, TJ Watt, really, really solid player, progressing at a great, great level for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Titans get themselves an edge rusher to maybe eventually uh, overtake the position of Brian Arakpo, who's slowing down as he gets older. And maybe, what is it, Derek Morgan on the other side who starts? And Kevin Dodd hasn't really ever played um, a full season for the Titans as far as I know. He was a really good player at Clemson great 4-3 defensive end for them there but i think with tj watt titans get themselves a great player and the needed edge help for them and their defense at number 19 the tampa bay Buccaneers would select oj howard a tight end out of alabama and oj howard of course was behind cameron Brait nearly all the season didn't really play too much but with this pick we're going to go ahead and give the tampa bay buccaneers Jonathan Allen, defensive lineman out of Alabama. I think it's an absolute travesty that he's fallen so far in my redraft, but when you have a guy that's dealt with injury as he has and didn't really play much the entire season, even though in my mind he was a top four player in the draft going into this season, going into the draft, he fell because of a shoulder issues, I believe it was. He's a really, really good player. Tremendously athletic for such a big guy because he is a, you know an interior defensive lineman. Um... He's going to be great help for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive line to go aside. Gerald McCoy, you could even play him on the outside. He has the athleticism to be a 4-3 defensive end, possibly, even though that might not be his best fit. With this spot, 
for the Bucks, it's best player available, and that's without a shadow of a doubt for me, Jonathan Allen. At number 20, the Denver Broncos would select Garrett Bowles, an offensive tackle out of Utah. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't really know what Garrett Bowles did this past season. I don't know how solid he was. I think he was probably middle of the table as far as offensive linemen go. But with this pick, we're going to go ahead and give the Broncos a receiving threat in O.J. Howard, tight end out of Alabama. I think he's a top 10 player in this draft class. And given the opportunity to play more, he's going to be phenomenal. Despite what his Madden rating is for run blocking, I think he's a very solid run blocker in real life. He has good speed, catching, um, route running. He's really the complete tight end package. I think one of the most complete tight end prospects we've seen in the draft since maybe uh, Gronk in 2010 or 2011 or when he was drafted. So OJ Howard, very, very solid player. Big fan of his. And uh, he is the pick here for the Broncos at number 20, I believe, somewhere around there. Yep, at number 21, the Detroit Lions would select Jared Davis, a linebacker out of Florida. He was solid for the Lions. We're not going to dilly-dally too long. We're going to go ahead and have the Lions select in this redraft. Dalvin Cook, remember this guy? Was really solid for the Vikings before going down to injury. Arguably could have gone before many of the running backs we already saw. Could have gone before Leonard Fournette, maybe. Could have gone before Christian McCaffrey. I think it came down to... Uh, production and injury concerns and even though Dalvin Cook hasn't had many injuries in the past this one was a big one he's coming off an ACL tear if I remember correctly that is a pretty big injury and I still think the Lions could use a running back I think every Lions fan on the face of the planet would agree with me the Lions need a running back gonna pursue Le'Veon Bell heav heavily in free agency if he doesn't get tagged by the Steelers which I think is probably the likelihood if they can't negotiate a contract with him for re-signing before the free agent period hits Dalvin Cook to the Lions they need a running back it makes a lot of sense he's still on the board like come on you gotta go with him at number 22 the Miami Dolphins would go Charles Harris a defensive end Adam Mizzou wasn't phenomenal this year for the Miami Dolphins so for that reason I'm replacing him with Tack McKinley defensive end out of UCLA we're just going to call him an edge rusher I think he fits the system very well the Miami Dolphins I think he was solid this past season for the Falcons uh, plays with a great deal of emotion even though that's not really relevant it's a fact I don't know if you guys have ever seen the video of him getting drafted he goes ballistic pretty much um you know, talking about his grandma and stuff. It was emotional if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, good player, bright future, great potential. Tack McKinley to help out the edge rusher needy Miami Dolphins. At number 22, the New York Giants would select Evan Ingram, a tight end out of Ole Miss. He was decent this past year for the Giants. I am a Giants fan. He dropped a lot of passes, obviously a liability in run blocking. I guess that's probably not obvious, but he is a liability in run blocking. For me, he is a wide receiver that plays tight end, and I think he's probably being misused in the Giants system a little bit, um, as I don't think he is a pure tight end. He's more of a joker in that joker position, dual wide receiver, tight end hybrid. Dropped a lot of balls for the Giants. But nevertheless, I digress. We're moving on. New York Giants are going to select. Nah, it's still going to be Evan Ingram. I like him. I am a Giants fan. He needs to get better hands. He made a lot of great plays. Also, still can't run block. Dropped a lot of passes. Not good. Great potential. We're going to keep the pick the same. At number 24, the Oakland Raiders would select Garyon Conley, cornerback out of Ohio State. One of my favorite cornerbacks in the draft class. Um, another guy that couldn't really stay healthy. He was injured a lot, but was decent when he played. Nothing phenomenal, unfortunately. Um, but regardless, we're going to have the Raiders select Jared Davis, a linebacker out of Florida. Solid season. Good player. Really like him here. It's no secret the Raiders need linebacker help very, very badly. They have one of the worst linebacking cores in the NFL because I am calling Khalil Mack a defensive end. I am basically calling Bruce Irvin a defensive end, even if he's a hybrid linebacker defensive end. They need linebacker help badly. Jared Davis hopefully should provide that for the Raiders. Also, I totally forgot to say this at the start of the video, but this roster was all made by one of my mods, Eagle Touchdown 11. So thank you very much. I do want to give you a shout out in the video if that's what you're looking for. Uh, forgot to at the start. Here it is now. Thank you for making the roster. Very much appreciated. 
as we're moving on to the next pick. Where the Cleveland Browns picking again in the draft as they will have another pick coming up later. They took Jabril Peppers. Ugh. Okay, so here's the deal with Jabril Peppers. People always ask me, it's like, what went wrong with Jabril Peppers? He was so good in college. He was such a good playmaker. It didn't really work in the NFL because the coaching staff of the Browns is horrific. So when Jabril Peppers is playing free safety, which he should never be doing, he should be an in-the-box strong safety. It's basically as bad as when the Giants had Landon Collins playing free safety his rookie year, where he was dog shit. He was awful, and the Giants were like, oh, maybe we should play him as strong safety. And then he becomes one of the best strong safeties in the NFL. That's the situation that we have here with Jabril Peppers. I think if they moved him over, played him a more in-the-box role, he'd be phenomenal. However, when he's playing free safety and lining up 24 yards off the line of scrimmage, don't believe me? There's proof. Look it up on Twitter. I've retweeted it at some time in the past. He is literally lining up 24 yards off the line of scrimmage. 10 yards further than he should be at the very least. He's acting like he's returning punts as a free safety. He has no pursuit. It's very bad. He needs coaching, and he'll be very, very good, in my opinion. However... Based off his absolute dog shit first season, I'm not going Jabril Peppers here. I'm going to have the Browns take Juju Smith-Schuster, receiver out of USC. I'll say off the bat, Juju really bothers me on Twitter. He's really fucking annoying. Uh, but you can't take away how good of a player he is. He had so many yards in the slot for the Steelers. Big part of their offense this past year. He was exceptional for a rookie. Should have been up there in the conversation for rookie of the year. As I'm actually sure he was. Um, super talented player, very annoying on Twitter, and maybe you love him on Twitter. That's your thing, not for me. Uh, really good player here. Browns need the receiver help. Josh Gordon coming back, looks like he never lost a step. He was awesome. Corey Coleman's not working out. Rashard Higgins is playing a lot of snaps. He probably shouldn't be. Ricardo Lewis is eh. Um, but Juju Smith-Schuster, good player. Browns need the receiving help. This is a no-brainer for me. At number 26, the Atlanta Falcons would go tack McKinley, an edge rusher out of UCLA. And with this pick in the NFL redraft, the Atlanta Falcons will select Carl Lawson, edge rusher out of Auburn. Had a very, very good season. Flew under the radar, but he was exceptional. He could have gone switch places with Tack McKinley, the Dolphins at 22. Carl Lawson was really, really good. Um, and obviously... He's going to be worthy of that first round selection in the draft two over. And uh, Falcons take an edge rusher. Tack McKinley is no longer available. Carl Lawson is the next best option, if not even better than Tack McKinley. He was phenomenal. Really underrated player for the Bengals. Watch out for him next year. I'm telling you. At number 27, the Buffalo Bills would go Tredavious White, cornerback out of LSU. That would prove to be a very, very good selection. However, clearly in this draft two over, he is no longer on the board. The Dolph Dolphins, excuse me, <laughs> Buffalo Bills instead will select Dalvin Tomlinson, defensive tackle out of Alabama. The Giants took him, and he was awesome for the Giants. So, so good on the interior of that defensive line. One of the shining pieces right up there, of course, with Damon Harrison. Dalvin Tomlinson was so good. Really underrated player in real life. The, uh, the Bills have Adolphus Washington playing a lot of slaps, snaps. He's okay. Kyle Williams is super old. They trade away Mar uh, Marcel Darius. Dalvin Tomlinson is a no-brainer pick here. He looks a lot like Animal from the Muppets. Fun fact I've just noticed. I'm actually going to uh, pull up a picture of Animal in the next couple of seconds here. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the Cowboys. I hate to do you dirty here, Dalvin, but... You look a lot like Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> like, it's uncanny. Head shape, face. I'm very sorry, but, I mean, it's basically the same person. Maybe the arms aren't as big. <laughs> I'm so sorry. At number 28, the Dallas Cowboys would go Taco Charlton. Taco. Taco Charlton, a defensive end out of Michigan. Um, I don't really recall him playing too much. And when he did, I don't think he was that good. And a lot of that is speculation. I really don't think he played many games. Uh, I wonder if you can check his stats here on uh, on Madden. I'm on it right now. They don't show it, but I, I don't know what he did. Actually, we can just check on here. What did Taco do? Three sacks, 19 tackles. Kind of a mess season for a first-round pick, I'm not going to lie. 
So we are going to change it up and have the Dallas Cowboys select Desmond King, cornerback slash potential safety out of Iowa. And they would take a bunch of cornerbacks later in Jordan Lewis. And I think they had Chidobe Awuzie. Um, but at this point in the draft, they, they don't have any of those. So Desmond King is the pick here. Great season for the Chargers. He is somebody that can play safety. What is on my screen right now? I didn't do that correct in the correct order at all. Desmond King here for the Cowboys. Hate the Cowboys. Hate that they're getting a great player. But uh, have to be fair, going to give them Desmond King. Help out that secondary. Back to everybody's favorite team to watch fail miserably. The Cleveland Browns at pick number 29. They take David Njoku, a tight end out of Miami. By the way, that is how you say his name. Uh, like there's Ndamukongsu, not Ndamukongsu. There's David Njoku, not Njoku, which is, I don't know why it's like that, but that's how it is. Um, but we're not going to give them David Njoku. Just not going to do it. I want to go with a different player. And that different player is going to be... What happened with my voice there at the end? I don't know. John Johnson the third, Rookie, of course, out of BC. Great season for the Rams. The safety pairing of him and LaMarcus Joyner was so fun to watch and a huge part of why their defense was amazing. John Johnson had a sixth season. I thought he was a sophomore in the NFL. Not a rookie. Not a freshman. But he was. He had a, such a good season. Flew so far under the radar for the Rams. Uh, and he was exceptional. This is better than Derek Kindred. This is better than Jabril Peppers. This is the safety help that the Browns so desperately need. And David Njoku's not bad. I just don't have them going him at this particular spot. Did I say him? I meant them going him. Browns, of course. I don't know. With the 30th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers would go TJ Watt, an edge rusher out of Wisconsin, clearly no longer on the board. He went earlier to the Tennessee Titans. Got to go a different pick here. Got to go a different way. And that the way is going to be Chidobi Awuzi slash Awuzie. I've heard both ways. I think it's Awuzie. Cornerback out of Colorado. Um, solid player. Good potential. Big bodied. Physical. Strong cornerback with good speed. What more do you want in a cornerback? I don't know. Take them. They could use the cornerback help. And I know what you're thinking. All right. We don't need a cornerback. We have Joe Hayden. We have Mike Hilton. All right, Mike Hilton, great nickel option. I agree. He was a rookie. However, not on the roster at this point. And then you have Artie Burns. He's actually solid. But Joe Hayden is an aging cornerback, and I know you're looking 28. How is he aging? As much as I love Joe Hayden, and I do, he's been one of my favorite players in the NFL since he was drafted by the Browns. He is not the same cornerback he was before injuries. Such a poor case of not being able to stay healthy. Joe Hayden just really isn't that good anymore. And I hate to say it, but it's factually accurate. Uh, Chidobe Woozy should pair with Artie Burns really, really nicely. Maybe he'll play the slot. Mike Hilton, at this point, is not on the team. He's just not. I don't think he is. Unless he was a second-year player, I was under the impression that he was a rookie. I mean, I guess not technically. He was on the practice squad for the Jaguars and Patriots, and then I guess was playing last year for the Steelers um, but he wasn't good until just this year I think he had like three sacks in one game or something ridiculous but either way I think they do need another cornerback I don't think Joe Hayden's a viable option and you could go a number of different directions I just think Chidobe Awuzie is the best player available at this position right now maybe they want a quarterback I don't think that'd be the right move a year ago even though knowing what we know now um you're going to take a different position. I think cornerback help is very much appreciated by the Steelers. At number 31, the 49ers would get a steal and go Reuben Foster. No longer on the board. He went earlier to the Raiders, I want to say. Not the Raiders. No, he went early. He went to the Cardinals. He went to the Cardinals. Obviously, that can't still be the pick. Instead, we're going to have the 49ers select at 31. Raekwon McMillan, linebacker out of Ohio State. I think he's you know, not a left outside linebacker. I think he's a pure middle linebacker. Really, really sad that he didn't play any last season due to being injured. The entire season was so good his second year at Ohio State, or third year, I should say. He wasn't that good as a sophomore, even though he was being touted as one of the best linebackers in the class. He wasn't really that good his sophomore year when he was getting all that hype. And then his junior year, he was really, really good and then didn't get the recognition. Peculiar. He would end up going in like the second or third round. He is a first-round pick. 
Like, he is really, really good. And I think even though he didn't play any last season, his talent is so incredible. He does deserve to be a first-round pick. I'm giving the 49ers that linebacker that they wanted, but can't get at this point since Ruben Foster is no longer available. Raekwon McMillan to the Niners. Moving on, last pick in the first round that we're doing, we have the New Orleans Saints. And in the draft, the New Orleans Saints would go uh, Ryan Ramchek, a tackle out of Wisconsin, or Wisconsin, as they say over there. But uh, instead, I'm going to go ahead and give, because uh, he's no longer on the board, clearly. I'm going to go ahead and give them Hassan Reddick, linebacker out of Temple. Now, I was really, really, really close to making this Marcus Williams. I just wanted to make it a little bit more exciting for the video. I think Marcus Williams did deserve to be a first-round pick. It just didn't work out that way when I was doing this. Marcus Williams had a tremendous season. He might even be a pro bowler as early as next year. He was so good, despite many people remembering him, of course. And it, it, how can you not? It just happened. The miracle uh, in Minneapolis, or whatever you want to say, uh, with the Vikings. I think very, very good player. David Njoku, probably a first-round talent. But just the way it worked out, not everybody can go in the first round. Uh, I'm going Hassan Reddick here. He's a Swiss Army knife. He will help out that second level of the New Orleans State's defense, give them some speed at the linebacker position, which is something that they lack um, better than Stefan Anthony. I know he's no longer on the team, but that's the fast linebacker that they had recently. Um, very, very talented player, can do a lot, was not really utilized to the best of his abilities this past season with the Cardinals. I think uh, could fit in really, really well with the Saints. Maybe it'd be great. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. Marcus Williams, he should be a first-round pick. He really should be. It just didn't work out that way. Um, he is such a talented player. Don't remember him for making a really terrible mistake that would end up costing the Saints an NFC Championship berth. Remember him for having a great season and maybe even the interception earlier in that game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Shit, don't